It's a great pleasure to be with Marisa Russo, forensic healer extraordinaire. Tell us about how you got started in healing and how forensic healing came about. Thank you, Richard. Well, it came about after I searched for um, some sort of relief from a lot of pain. I grew up uh, in a lot of childhood abuse and it... Um, I just wanted to end my life. I spent my whole life wanting to dig a hole and die. And then I had excruciating pain around my neck and my shoulders. So, um, yeah, I, I just had to get relief. It, the pain was so bad. And then I started looking for alternative healing. And then that opened the door for me to release this, this trauma. It was so huge that was um, stuck, stuck in my body. My father was, my father hated me. He was not very nice. I think he hated life, probably hated life. And uh, he would look for ways to take it out on us, particularly me, because I think I didn't like him. I wanted, I wanted him to love me, but I really didn't like him because he was just angry. And he had this belt, he had an army belt that it was thick, it was green, and it hung on the back of the kitchen door and so when he picked it up you knew you're in trouble and six years of age was probably the most traumatic time in my life six years was age six was when I got hit by a car six age six was when he sexually abused me and age six I remember a particular incident it was when I was really scared of ghosts and uh, I, I'd gone to bed that night with my little sister. She was a year younger and we were in bed. And I was so scared of these ghosts because this girl at school told me about the ghosts. And they would come and get me as I walked past this house that uh, we would walk past after school. So I'm in bed at night after dinner and I go to my sister, can I hop into bed with you? And she said I could because I was just so scared. So I hopped into bed and my dad had his radar out. He walked by the room and he says, get in the bed get in your own bed so I jump in I don't say anything because I don't you don't talk to my dad and it's weird I don't know why he walked by that night but then he came back and I had jumped back in her bed and so I was in I knew I was in trouble he went and he and he got the belt and when he would get the belt you would just like he would shut the door in the bedroom so the only person in the room was my little sister he shut the door and then you would just cower and then I would start putting my hands behind my back and because I knew who's going to beat me and then he uh, he just got the belt and he just beat me and beat me and beat me and I was frozen and then I hopped, then I just got back into bed in a lot of fear and I spent the rest of the night in fear and then in the morning I woke up thinking I was going to be killed <laughs> It was so crazy. I heard a noise. And uh, anyway, that that's just one incident that stands out. I don't remember a lot of my childhood, but that's kind of how my life would be. Um, just this fear of, of my father with this belt and, and then or pulling my hair or um, slapping me or just, you know. So that's, now, that was the... Yeah. Yeah, you, you mentioned sexual abuse. I remembered the day after when I remember getting up in the morning and I go, what just happened? I remember how I felt. I remember that something must have happened to me. My childhood was very um, vague. I remember one time I was pretending I was asleep. I pretended a lot. And then he said, oh, I remember saying to my mum, let's strip her. I'm, I'm like eight years old or seven, I don't know. He's just like, and I never really liked him. But the bottom line was that you had a very difficult and painful childhood with respect to your father. That seems to be something that is a commonality amongst the most talented healers, that there was something in their childhood, or a number of things in their childhood, that caused them to go outside of the realm of their physical existence and develop a connection to other things. Did you feel that happening to yourself? Yeah, I, I, it must. Well, I didn't. I didn't realize I was destined to be anything. I didn't realize. I thought I was nothing. I hated my life. I hated 
I, I, well, how could you not? Because the person, one of the people at least that you looked up to, was basically reaffirming every moment that you were crap, that you were nothing, that you were worthless, that you were a bad girl, all of those things. The subconscious takes those things very literally, as you know. Yes. So, so the, hence why I did the healing. The healing really saved my life because I was very self-destructed. I, I was really wanted to end my life, and if I had an easy way out, I would have taken it. And it was in a inner child healing that that something exploded, something released so profound, so intensely, that it must have released all of that frozen emotion and and everything, all that shutting down. Because after that, I could feel incredibly profoundly I could feel emotions that my body would respond and that was when my real healing gift started to open up was when I could st connect reconnect myself to who I naturally was Wow so how did forensic healing get birthed well that was a, that was the beginning and it burst in the way that I would I was healing when I received that healing um, I was a healer and I started to realize it was the detail of finding out the who, what, when and why. When I found out detail of how something happened with a person, it's like it, it brings it to the surface. It's like it's exposed and hence the forensics. And that, that's how it was birthed. And then we created a system around that that made it much more powerful. In fact, forensic healing brings out the most powerful healer in you. What does that mean? It means that if you're already a healer, it will bring the, the most powerful side out of you because of the system has um, words of power and it has every angle of healing in it, every aspect that elevates you. And that is the feedback from all healers that have done it for, have done healing for many, many years. They do the system and they're blown away. They, the miracles happen, incredible healings occur. And it's... It's probably because of the intensity of pain that I had that made me keep searching because every angle, every aspect of my life was affected, finances, relationships, health, everything. And I had to dig and dig and I wouldn't stop till I felt really good. Wow. And so for how long have you been creating that feeling good for other people now? I think I've been doing it for about over 20 years, not in the energy healing, but I, I was doing other therapies. So I've, I was always had that inclination. I wanted to help. I wanted to make people feel good. So does this work? Give us a story. I know you have a story about someone who went to actual doctors, MDs, chiropractors, with respect to his arm. Tell us that story. Well... The client came to my clinic and he, he was in excruciating pain. He'd, he was frustrated. He'd seen every therapist. Um, and Including like medical doctors and like credentialed people with decades of experience on things like that. Yeah. Well, they're, they're my favorite when they can't find what the cause is. So they're my favorite. So he came and I asked him to get up on the table. So he's, he's in a lot of pain. So he winces as he gets up. And what was wrong with him? Well, well, he's, sorry, his arm. He couldn't raise his arm. It was, it was too sore. It was really painful. And he'd probably bring it out slightly, but couldn't raise his arm, could barely dress himself gets on the table and then I start I scan his I scan the body I find out the cause and it came up a word vaccination vaccinations it was a weird word I'm like I didn't know what in reference to a sore arm I didn't couldn't understand that and he said oh my gosh I remembered I had a vaccination three months prior before going to India and the pain began after that and then it increased and it's sort of like it identified where it was coming from. So, so I said, okay, well, I can do the healing for you. What happens when I do a healing? I, I physically feel energy and I will move. So I had to explain to him because he's thinking I'm a bit of a nutter at this point that I will move when I'm uh, doing the healing. And he said, he didn't really care at that point. He said, just fix my arm. So I, I, I'm a channel for energy and it comes through me and it releases the, the cause and it reprograms his brain, his body to be able to lift. It's a bit like a, a computer that might have a virus 
um, and it's like deleting or negative files. It's like a deletion of a program or a virus. And if you do that in a computer, you can do that in the body. And then it restores itself back. So Almost like reboot back to a time when it was working before the virus or the file corrupted it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good analogy. So did did the healing. And then I said, and he could feel, he could feel like this a vibration because people often feel tingling running through their body. Or they call it waves of energy. And he could feel that, and he's looking at me. And, uh, and, I, and I finished the healing, and I said, now raise your arm. And he started to raise it in increments. He didn't look like he was convinced, and then he lifts it and lifts it higher and higher, right up with this really surprised look, like, oh, my God, I can raise my arm. Gave me the biggest hug with both arms. And, um, and he walked out completely changed he, and also understanding that, that there's alternative ways that can heal, that, that he would probably go down that route the next time. And that's what forensic healing is, finding the root cause and releasing it. And so in summary, if people are interested in doing what, they should contact you. It's finding out why they have what they have. They have, might have a certain condition or problems with relationships or blocks in any area of their life. I can identify it because I will go back to an age where a program was embedded and then talk about it, get them to understand it, and it's like this healing can occur then. And then um, it, it allows the person to be very interactive with their own healing. It's not just about me, but it's about them understanding their life, their life lessons, and what they need to do to go forward. Great. Marisa Russo, forensic healer, thank you for being so candid about your life. That was pretty powerful. But obviously there was a purpose for it, and you're able to contribute to the world in equal or far greater parts as a result of that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Richard.